keys, attunement, okay. secret summonable bosses, locked doors, and barred entryways. They're all over the place in Classic. Some are as simple as looting it from a single boss, and others are enormous excursions requiring you to visit dungeons, raids, the peak of a volcano, you name it. Mm -hmm. Tracking them all down can be a challenge, yes, but in this it is. video I thought I'd show you one by one where you get all of these keys, okay. and why they're important, and where to use them, and also include some bonuses such as summonable bosses because oh. why not? Oh. The only thing I'll be excluding are the Anixia Attunement and the Scepter of the Shifting Sands because they're the I most extensive the quest chains in Classic. I haven't done so yet. something I think is better saved for standalone videos, which I'll have linked in the description once I finish them. So, without further delay, let's get into it. The first thing I'll say is that you can access all of your keys in the keyring. Once you loot one, you'll get an extra inventory button to the left of your bags. Just thought I'd mention that, since it'll sneak by some people. They just did this to save players some inventory space, because there are quite a lot of keys in the game. Okay. Do note though, that this won't be available right away in the re-release. Blizzard couldn't figure this For shit out! For some reason, they're just patching it in later. Yep. So I think it makes sense to start at low level and okay. just go up from there. So first up, I threw we this have one the workshop away. key. This unlocks the back door to the Nomergon dungeon, found by going down this path as you enter from the outside. And this just serves as a shortcut to the depths of the dungeon. Not at all required to full clear it. You loot it from the Electrocutioner 6000 boss, who can be found right here on the map. He's about okay. 20 minutes into the dungeon, and everyone in the party gets the key. Yep. I have so, this pretty fast and loose description, I know, I had but we have a lot anymore. to cover in this video, so, so I'd rather keep things so short and sweet. Good, dude. And next looks up, so we have the good. Scarlet Key. Pretty simple one here, yep, I have this in the one library too. wing of the dungeon, which is to your right heading inside. At the end is Arcanist Stone's room, and you'll see a little chest in the back. This holds the Scarlet Key, and it opens the armory and cathedral wings of the dungeon, and even the level 60 human wing of Stratholm as well, so make sure that you hang on to it. And again, everyone in the party can loot this one. Okay. Next, we have sort of kind of a key, and that's the Staff oh, of yeah. Prehistoria. In the Aldeman dungeon, early on, you'll see this giant locked door, and nearby, a pedestal that requires the Staff. From the Trog okay. boss, Revelash, who you fought to reach this room, yep. you can get the Shaft yep. of Soul. And backtracking a bit more through this room, you'll find three dwarves, friendly to the Alliance and hostile to the Horde, and near them you can find a chest that has the Nick of Medallion. You need to combine these items together to form the staff, and you use that in the pedestal near the giant stone door, and you'll get a scene that's reminiscent of Indiana Jones. See, I, I literally fucking never knew how to do this. Like, all through Vanilla WoW, I never figured it out. I thought it was like a quest line or some shit. I could never figure this stupid ass shit out. I feel so dumb. And a giant boob lady will bust through like the Kool-Aid man and attack you. So this is just an extra boss for some bonus loot. You also need to enter this room for a quest. And next, we have the Scepter of Celebris, which is the Marauding Key. Yep. Entering the dungeon, you'll be met with the three-way path, commonly referred to as Orange Marauding, Purple, and Inner. And going down the yep. middle, you reach this room with a little altar. And if you use the Scepter here, you spawn a portal that you and your party can use to be teleported to Inner Marauding, which is the finale of the dungeon. To get the Scepter, you need to find the NPC Kavindra, who can be found right here in the orange side. You need to grab the Legends of Marauding Quest, which requires the Celebrian Diamond and Rod, I did this. both of which can I did be this. found within the dungeon from the main bosses of each side. Here they are on the map, if you have trouble tracking them down. Again, I had no idea how to do this when I turned this in to Celebris the Redeemed. Like, literally, the only key I could figure out in Vanilla WoW was the Scarlet Key. That was it. Every other key was a complete fucking mystery to me. Because I always figured that if I got a group, Somebody else would have it, and I'd never have to figure it out myself. It can be found right here on the map, right before you drop in the waterfall, and as a reward, you get the scepter. Another boss summon is the Mallet of Zulfurak. I never did this one either. You need this to summon the Gazrilla boss inside the dungeon. You first need an item called the Sacred Mallet, which you get from the troll, Kiaga the Keeper, who's located right here Wait, on really? top of the Altar of Zul and the Hinterland Zone. I thought this was a and quest! And from here, you need to head east to the giant troll city of Jintha Alor, and at the top near the cave, you use it to turn it into the Mallet of Zulfrak. What? Specifically, you use it right here in the dungeon. Heading outside the dungeon, oh though, my god, the dude. Key. Located south of the steam oh my hub, fucking there's god. a pirate cove, and the mobs here have a chance to drop a footlocker that okay. has a chance to contain this key. 
You use it on the furthest boat from the nearby docks to open the captain's chest, okay. which guarantees you at least a green item drop. Due to this oh, wow. and the high abundance of enemies in general, it's a wow. popular gold farming spot for many players. Okay. And another boss summon is Yakinya Scroll, which is used to spawn the avatar of Hakar boss in the Sunken Temple. Okay. Find Yakinya in the Steam Weedle Port located right here we in Tanneris. We did do this one. And complete to be fair, the following we did quests. This one up. That's Screecher Spirits, Prophecy of mm -hmm. Mosharu, the Ancient yep. Egg, and the God Hakar. Easy. Again, Easy. I don't want to go too detailed here because we have a lot to cover. I think it's best to be a bit terse. The final part though, the God Hakar, requires you to use the egg to summon and kill the avatar. And after you do that and turn in the quest, speak once more to Yakinya to get the scroll to summon him however many times you want. There's already more fucking keys and shit added like in the first five minutes of this video than are in like all of the last three expansions. It, it's kind of crazy to think that. And next we have an alliance only key and that's the key to the Searing Gorge which you need to enter this tunnel that connects the zone to Lac Modan. From the Margul the Rager Elite, located right here in the zone, you can loot his horn, and this gives you a quest to talk to Mountaineer Pebble Biddy, who's guarding the tunnel on the Lac Modan side. She sends you to Iron Forge, and then you're sent back to her, and she finally relents and gives you a key to enter the tunnel freely. Next, we have the Shadow Forge key. In the middle of the Black Rock Mountain, you'll see a plat- Mods, please stop putting it on sub mode platform suspended with some chains, and inside you'll find this room. At first glance, it's nothing special, but if you visit this place in ghost form, you'll actually encounter an NPC, Frank Lorne Forge Raid, who's the architect of the Black Rock Depths. He gives you a quest to get a hammer called Ironfell, which can be found inside the dungeon. This Not drops from the NPC, Phineas Darkfire, who can foe. be found deep inside. You have to head straight across this main area and then do the arena event. We did this and then go one through too. the unlocked gate and up through the stands until you reach a fork in the road. Remember this spot because you'll be returning here. So for now though, just take a left and across uh, the I, bridge. I, 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 I'll let it go. I'll let it go until you reach this balcony area. Okay. In your first straight, you'll see the bank vault, and you want to remember this room as well because it's also important. But going a bit past that, you'll find Phineas's room with all of the golems, and she'll be patrolling around this area. So kill him loot the iron fell mm -hmm. and head back to that fork in the road that she saw earlier and take a right this time down the hallway until you that that thing right there is where you turn in right i randomly clicked that the other day i didn't even know that's where you were supposed to turn in at i had no fucking idea i just randomly clicked that and it turned out to be the quest no fuck i got so lucky with that shit reach this dead end click the statue and turn in iron fell and as a reward, you get the Shadow Forge key, which opens up a bunch of doors and shortcuts throughout the dungeon. It doesn't open prison cells, though. For those, you need the prison cell key, and this one is much easier. What the fuck do I get that? From the anyway? entrance, just follow this path into the jailer's room, okay. and you're looking for a boss here called High Interrogator Gerstan. Take him oh. out, and he'll drop your get out of jail free card. Oh, okay. Some of the surrounding cells hold NPCs that you need for quests. Wow. The most notable being Marshal Windsor for the Alliance's Anixia Tunnel. I had no idea how to get but the again, key. we'll save that for its own video. There do exist a few more keys within the zone, though. From the trash mobs, you loot the relic coffer keys, and you use these in that bank that you saw on your way to Phineas Darkfire for the Shatterforge key. There are 12 vault doors total, each of which has a chest that has some goodies. And if you open all 12, you get a secret summon boss, and that's Watchman Doomgrip. Okay. Killing him triggers a secret a very safe good on the southeastern side of the room that has some blue drops, and also the heart of the mountain, which you need for a random quest. We did all of this shit like two and days ago. And on the wall in the same room, you'll find the Dark Iron Portrait. Oh, yeah. Interacting with it. Oh, you'll spawn yeah. spawn random dark keepers somewhere inside the dungeon. You have Bethic, who will spawn right next to you inside the vault. Yep. Pelver, who spawns inside the domicile. This is really fucking cool. Here. Zimril will be on a bench. You think about like how intricate this shit is, dude. There's like more. There's like more mechanics and like little fucking RPG mechanics in BRD than there is in like every fucking dungeon in a new expansion nowadays. Like, why? I don't know why they don't design more dungeons like this. I love this fucking dungeon. I wish they did more like this. It was great. For looking at the arena, Oogle in the Hall of Crafting right next door, Afgut in the West Garrison. This is near General Anger Forge, and Vorfalk, whom you can find in the Grim Guzzler. This unlocks the Dark Coffer, also found in the Vault Room, 
and it gives you a variety of helpful items. Screens, sure, gems, and even reagents yep. for powerful enchants. We have one more here before we leave, and that's the Grim Guzzler key. The Grim Guzzler is a bar located inside the dungeon, and at the far end is a door blocking your path to the final stretch. There are many ways to open it, and one of the ways is just through a key as you'd expect. If you have a rogue in the group, they can just pickpocket the bartender, plug her spazzering, to let you out without incident. And next, we have the Crescent Key, which you need to open up the northern and western wings of the Diremal Dungeon. Ha, I have Heading no idea to the how to eastern get this. entrance of the dungeon. I have no idea how to get this. Inside to your left, you'll find an imp named Pusilin. And if you talk to him, he'll run away through a pack oh, of enemies. Oh, yeah. And you repeat this process over then and you over finally until kill him. he's cornered, and he'll turn into a boss. Yeah, you beat kill his him, ass. And he'll drop this key. Wait, really? The That's Diremal it? The Dungeon is oh, also shit. the stage for the finale of the Warlock Epic Mon Quest okay. Chain, where they get their dread steed. This is another huge undertaking, and All another right. I think is best saved for its own video. To sum it up though, Warlocks can embark on a large quest chain yep. where the globe this is over the in world uh, and get burning some reagents, steps. and it climaxes in the western wing of Diremal, where you use these reagents to summon the Dreadlord, Helnarath, and take his steed. He drops some unique loot, and the items are reusable, so a lot of Warlocks keep them for some bonus loot whenever- We actually did this in current WoW. Like, if you have the items to go summon this guy again from back in the day, you can actually go back and summon him even today. It's one of the coolest, most badass fucking things ever. I cannot wait to do this again. They run the dungeon, or they just want to help another warlock with their quest. So, again, I went through that kind of quickly. I'll have a link to a full text guide in the description if you want more detail. And next, we have some Skullman's keys. To zone into the dungeon, you need the skeleton key, which you get from a quest chain. If you're Alliance, you want to head to Commander Ashlim Valorfist, located right here in the Chillwind Point in the Western Plaguelands. And if you're Horde, you need to talk to the High Executor Darrington at the Bulwark, which is right here at the border near Tearsfall Glades. You need to complete the following prerequisite quests before you can obtain the quest chain for the key, simply titled Skull Immense. Again, kind of going through this quickly, you have to collect skeletal fragments from the undead and bring those and 15 gold. This is literally what we're doing right fucking now. This is fucking, this is great because I have no idea how to get into school months. I have no fucking idea. To crinkle good steel and gadget sand, and you bring that to the top of the Fireplume Ridge volcano in the neighboring Ungoro crater and forge the key. Okay. And lastly, you get a group quest to kill Arash the Summoner, who is an elite lich found in the undead town of Anderhal. As a reward for all of this, you get the skeleton key, which unlocks the door. And next, we have another boss summon, and oh, it's the yeah. Blood of the Innocents. This is Catronos the Herald. Entering this big crypt room, off to the right is a balcony with a brazier, and if you use the blood here, you summon Kirtonos the This is the one Herald, of the most badass areas in the game. boss that drops some nice loot, including the warrior's valor boots. To get the blood, you we're have to complete that, a short quest chain. We're Outside that, the dungeon dude. is Eva Sarkov, we're gonna do and that. she asks you to kill the doctor, Theolan Krastinov, and to burn the remains of her slain family. You can find him near the end of the dungeon, in the eastern room, on the upper level. Next, you need to kill Jandis Barov and loot her bag of horrors. Okay. She can be found in the crypts right here. This shit was scary, the last part, the first you need time to take out Kirtonos, and are given the this blood of to summon him. The blood is consumed on use, but from this point yep. forward, you can loot them from the blood steward Succubus, oh, no. who roams the big lobby room oh, near the entrance. Okay. And next, we have the viewing room key. You need this to reach the end of the dungeon and get past this locked door in the poison zombie room, and okay. you simply loot it from the rattlecore boss found in the basement right here. Note that only one drops, and once used, it's destroyed, so essentially, you have to kill him every time. That's and kind of annoying. For Immense, we have the divination scroll. It's not that big of a deal, but Very it's kind of annoying. to the Warlock Summon that we talked about earlier. You get this from the epic Mount Quest chain for Paladins this time, and it climaxes in the basement of Skull Immense in the same room as Rattlegore, and you defeat a Death Knight named Dark Reaver. Just like Helnareth, he drops oh, some yeah. loot. So yeah, th this one was a fort unfortunately taken out of the fucking game. I, I'm very, very upsetting for that. It's very upsetting that they took it out of the game. But like, since the new Skolomons doesn't even have this area in the game anymore, you literally can't even fight this guy, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. The Blizzard implemented a way to summon that? him more than well, once. You guys know what I'm saying. You use an item called the Divination Scryer to start the event which is consumed on use, but if you go to Lord Grayson's Shadowbreaker in the Stormwind Cathedral, he'll offer you another one free of charge, so you can summon the boss over and over. 
And next up, we have the Stratholme keys. First is the key to the city, which unlocks the back entrance, okay. located right here in the Eastern Plague Lands. How do you get this? This gives you quick access to what is called the undead portion of the dungeon. Okay. You loot the key from a mob inside, so for your first run, you'll have to go through the main entrance to the west. Right. You can also have a rogue lock pick it if they have that leveled up. Okay. But as for the key, you loot it from Magistrate Bartholus, who can be found right here inside the dungeon. Only one drops though, so you'll have to roll against your party members for it. Okay. And also in Strathholm, we have the mailbox keys. At these locations in the dungeon, you'll find these locked mailboxes, and each one you open spawns undead mailman to fight you, and upon opening the third one, you get a boss called the Postmaster Malone, who drops some extra goodies, including- Imagine having a set in the game that's dedicated to being a mailman. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you, you literally have a mailman set. It's fucking ridiculous, but here we are. A set that increases your run speed slightly. Okay. You get the keys from the Stratholm Courier, who can also be found right here in the dungeon. From the main entrance, just take a U-turn to your left at the first fork in the road. And note that these keys are consumed on use, so you'll have to get them every time if you want to summon the boss. And next, we have the Seal of Ascension, which is super oh. important. This gives this you access to the upper to portion of the Black Rock Spire Raid. We're about to get this shit right here, dude. Door near the entrance, taking it left up the stairs. Here it is, this right here. locked unless you have the ring. To get it, you need to instead head right from the entrance and go through the lower portion. Just take the path that you see here. And taking a left at this point, you'll see a secret path hidden in the dark. And continuing up and climbing the ledge, you'll notice a hostile orc who's not attackable. But if you close in on him, he'll transform into a human named Valen. If you talk to him, he'll give you a quest that requires four items. One, uh -huh. the unadorned seal of ascension, which you just loot off of random trash mobs located inside the raid. Uh -huh. And three gemstones. One of spire stone, smolder thorn, this one. and blood We need axe. to get these right here. The spire stone drops off the high level Yeah, we, ne we need to get this. For these, the map is kind of useless, so I'll just show you the path straight to them, with Valen as a starting point. This place is kind of a maze at first glance, but it's not too bad. For Smolderthorn, you need to take the path seen here. It's not uh -huh. too far away, just down a ramp until you enter the troll area, and keep going down until you reach the bottom, and head into this little side room. It's and funny to see this guide go on, whenever it's literally the exact same shit that I've been doing. You know? Like, it's not like, like we've been doing this literally today. And here and we lastly, are. And lastly, you have the gemstone of Blood Axe, which you get from the Overlord, Wormthalak, the final boss of the dungeon. The path is fairly linear, so you shouldn't have too much trouble finding him. The tough part of this quest is that A, only one person can loot each gem, and B, they don't always drop, so it's best if you're in a coordinated guild run and funneling them to one person, mm -hmm. and just farming over and over. If you're in a pug, it can take quite a while to complete this quest. For the follow-up portion, you need to travel to the Dustwall of Marsh, to this cave right here, and find an elite drake named Ember Strife, so bring some friends. You need to put the unforged seal on the ground, and then this weaken what him we did to last about 10% or two nights ago. until he can use a mind control orb to control him. Yep. You then we need did to this. use his flame breath on the unforged seal to forge it, and if you're successful, yep. you just loot it from the ground, and you're good to kill the drake. As a reward, you're given the seal of ascension ring, which opens up the door to the upper black rock spire, and as a bonus, we're gonna be doing this black right afterwards. In the arena, you can even use the ring to summon Velastraz the Red to assist you. Before we leave, though, we whoa, have whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute, whoa, there. whoa, wait a minute. You need to put the unforged seal on the ground and then weaken him to about ten percent until he can yeah. use a mind control orb to control him. Yeah. You then need to use his flame breath on the unforged seal to forge it. And if you're successful, you just loot it from the ground, and you're good to kill the drake. As a reward, you're given the Seal of Ascension okay. Ring, which opens up the door to the upper Black Rock Spire. And as a bonus, during the rent Blackhand fight in the arena, you can even use the ring to summon Velastraz the Red to assist you. Man, Before we leave, though, we have another summoned boss. What the, the lower fuck, really? The raid. Holy Upon shit! Omak, someone should have been able to loot his head. In between wow. Dylan and Omak, if you looked carefully, you may have noticed some clickable pikes stacked up against the wall. If you combine one of these with Omak's head, you can okay. summon an extra boss. You need to find the tribute pile, which is at that big ledge that you walked across on your way to the final boss. It's right after the spider area. Use this on the pile of skulls, and you'll fight a few ogres, 
and eventually Uruk Doomhall, who you need for a quest, and he also drops some bonus loot. It's a pretty tough event overall though, so just make sure that everyone is ready before you summon. That and shit was next, actually for hard. Bosses, we have the Brazier of Invocation. Like that shit with the Urog Doomhowl? I couldn't get mana. Well, yeah, because you were still in combat the whole fucking time because we had these mobs attacking us. Like, that's why it was they really, really hard. hard. Yeah, that was, like, actually hard. I was really surprised. I don't, I don't know. I don't think Druids are good tanks, man. I don't know. Like, because, like, the thing is, though, like, I was doing it with um, Burning Rob, right? And he's yeah. a warrior, so. My thing is like whenever they put the ar whenever any mob puts up a armor debuff on the on the druid, yeah, you can feel that shit, you know. But with the warrior, if they get that, that you know, you have a fucking shield and block and shit. But mm -hmm. I don't know, just I don't know, I'm just talking out my ass, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't know. I feel like druids can tank. I feel like they're probably like as good as warriors in terms of like maybe not quite as good as warriors in terms of mitigating damage, but they're really good at holding AOE threat, and that's why I like. That's why I like them. Yeah. Oh, let me serve this video. And the Banner of Provocation. These will only be obtainable in Phase 5 and onwards because they're tied to the Dungeon Set 2 quest line. Now, this is a huge, huge quest chain, and luckily, I already have it covered in guide form, so I think it's just best to keep that separate. To sum it up though, through the quest chain to obtain these new armor sets, you get these items to summon bonus bosses mm -hmm. in a few different dungeons. We did this one the on my service. The Banner of Provocation is used yep. in Blackrock Depths Arena to summon the Dwarf Gladiator yep. children. Aside from the quest, you also get some unique treasure, so it's always worth it to take them out if you're there anyways. And as yep. for the Brazier, you use this to summon Isalian at the end of the Diremal instance. We did her as Jirian well. and Sathos at we the end of the We did this one. Wait, did we do this one? I think we did, Hormak yeah. the Ogre, whom you summon in Ras Frost Whisper's room and Skullamance. Yep. And more Greyhoof, who can be summoned right here in Warmaster Voon's room in the Lower Blackrock Spire. And lastly, you visit the Upper Blackrock Spire and head to the Beast room, who can be found near the end of the raid. And here you summon Lord Velthalak, who's like the final boss of yep. the chain. He's the big dick. All of these bosses drop their own unique loot, and the Banner and Brazier are infinite use, so it's always good to have these at the ready for Still some bonus have loot em. whenever you're running these Still dungeons. Still have them, boys. And continuing the boss summons here, next up we have the Mudskunk Lore. In Phase 4, when we get Silk Rub, you can summon a secret boss called Gazranka. Just make sure that your fishing is all leveled up, and head to Nat Piggle's ruined camp inside the raid. It's in the northeastern area of the raid, next to the water, and you want to look for his tackle box to pick up a quest, and it'll take uh -huh. you to Nat in Dustwalla Marsh. Okay. Buy the Mudskunk Lure for one gold, and head back to Zulkarub, and keep an eye out for Mudskunk Pools. Fish up five total, and head back to the camp, and use the lure to summon Gezrenka. Wow. And lastly for summons, we have the Gurubashi Mojo Mad. I never fucking- I, I literally thought this shit was like voodoo back then. I was like, you go into that area, and there's, like, the spirit shit that's everywhere, and then there's, like, these this imp that spawns, and I have no fucking idea how any of this is supposed to happen. So I just show up, and if he's there, he's there, it's great, and if not, that's the way it goes. I had no fucking clue. Madness. Also right here in Zulkarub, you'll find a room called the Edge of Madness, and you use this to extinguish a brazier, which summons an extra boss who will drop a reagent for one of the many class trinkets that came out with the raid, along with some unique loot once again. Yep. You need one each of these reagents, along with a voodoo doll to make your trinket, and I'll have a full list of all of those in the description. As for obtaining the mojo, behind this gong in the same room is an interactable tablet, and if you click on it with level 300 alchemy, you'll learn the recipe for the mojo. Before we get into the raids, I should also mention the profession keys. Those are the blacksmith keys and engineer charges, and also the rogues lock picking. Blacksmiths can make skeleton keys, and engineers can make sephorium charges, and these, along with the okay, lockpick dude. skill, open up a variety of locked doors, chests, and lock boxes. Okay. They're not all powerful, as a lot of the high level doors in the game require the actual keys. Plus, any blacksmith key or engineer charge is consumed on use. So there's also that gold investment. Still though, pretty handy to have at the ready in case you're just missing keys or you run into a locked chest. And next, we have the Molten Core Attunement. At the okay. bottom of the Blackrock Mountain, find Lothos Riftwalker. Super straightforward quest here. You just need to go through the Blackrock Depths instance and near the end and find the Molten Core Portal and pick up a fragment. 
Just make sure that you don't accidentally zone in before grabbing it, since it does happen a lot. Here I'll show you the exact path, assuming that you have the Shadow Forge key, which we covered earlier. Uh -huh. We did this one too. Easy. Inside the Molten Core, Easy. to summon the Major Easy. Domo Executus boss, whom you need to defeat to summon Regnaros, you need to douse all of the various runes. In each boss's room, you'll find the runes, and you need an item called the Aqua Quintessence to douse them. Uh -huh. Find Duke Hydraxis, located right here on the island in Eastern Nishara, and complete the Poisoned Water and Stormers and Rumblers quests. Pretty straightforward. Okay. After that, you want to get the Eye of the Emberseer quest, which requires you to kill the Pyroguard Emberseer. Oh yeah, he gives you Hydraxis and Waterward Wrap, doesn't bring he? Back his eye. Whenever you and kill for him. the next part, you need to kill some trash within the Molten Core. Okay. And the follow-up requires Honored with the Hydraxian Waterlords faction, which you get by killing trash and bosses within the raid. And lastly, you need to finish Hands of the Enemy, which requires the hands of all of the Salamander bosses, and that's Shazra, Lucifran, Jehannes, and Sulfuren. Okay, you need all of their After hands. After turning in all of these, you can talk to Duke Hydraxis to receive one essence, which will douse one rune and is consumed on use. So you have to go back for another one each time. That's so fucking Luckily, annoying, though, dude. When you eventually reach Revere you think about with that, the Hydraxian Waterlords, Holy you're awarded shit. with the Eternal Quintessence, which has infinite uses and a one hour cooldown. And next up, we have the Blackwing Lair Attunement. In phase 3 when we get this raid, to zone in you have to complete a really short quest chain. From the entrance of the Blackrock Spire, head down this hallway and take a left to find the Scar Shield Quartermaster. Kill him to loot the Black Hand's command letter, which gives you details on how to zone into the raid. You need to click this orb at the end of the same hallway, but to do that first, you need to attune yourself. It's pretty simple. You just need to clear through the upper Blackrock Spire and click the orb behind Dracosath. This quest isn't up right now on Classic. I literally re-logged last night because I thought that I, I wasn't it wasn't working for me. I, I couldn't figure out, I was like, why the fuck is this not working, dude? And I, I just, I'm so dumb, dude. And from this point forward, you can just use that orb outside the raid to but, Yeah, it's in phase three, I know, the I know it is. The garage raid also technically has a key. It's pretty unique, though, because it's server-wide. When phase five hits, an event called the Encourage War Effort will begin, and each faction needs to gather a certain amount of resources to launch- Holy shit! Why do they need why why do they need almost half a million fish? Like half a million fish? The fuck is that for? Two hundred thousand two million linen bandage? God damn! To eat? Fuck that! I want a steak. Don't want that nasty ass garbage. An attack on the gates. Fuck fish. Once everyone is ready, you need to ring a gong located right outside to open them and fend off the Karaji army. But to do this, you need a special item called the Scepter of the Shifting Sands. Okay. This is a huge undertaking, requiring rep grinding, That's gonna be raid me, clearing, dude. outdoor world I'll bosses, be doing this right here. and lots and lots of globe trotting. Again, for the sake of saving time, this is better left for its own video. Yeah, I do probably. have one made already, and I'll have that link in the description. It takes a long description. fucking time to get through that whole thing. Do note, though, that you have the option of just waiting for someone else to get it, if it seems like it's too yeah. much for you. And lastly for this video, we have the next Ramus attunement. Phase we'll be 6, exalted. We'll see the next Ramus raid released. You get this ship for free if you're exalted with Archangelon. It's like, it's super easy. To zone in, like most other raids, you need to be attuned. Luckily, this one isn't too bad, though. Just find the Archmage Angela de Santos, located right here in the Eastern Plaguelands. She'll charge you money and reagents to attune you, giving you a bigger discount the higher reputation level you are with the Argentan faction. At Honored or below, it costs 60 gold, 5 for King Crystals, 2 Nexus Crystals, and 1 Righteous Orb. And at Revered, you need 30 gold, 2 Arcane Crystals, and 1 Nexus. And at Exalted, it's free. Wait. Yep. You're gonna let me save the world from the Lich King's number one lieutenant for free? Gee, thanks a lot. And that's it. Those are most of the main keys, summoned bosses, and attunements that you can obtain in Classic World of Warcraft. I'm actually so glad you did this video because I had no fucking idea about half of this shit, man. I have to be honest. Like, I, I'm so glad.
Again, aside from Anixia and the Scepter of the Shifting Sands, which again I think are best saved for their own videos. If you think I missed any, by all means let me know. I've been adding to this list for a few months now, okay. but it has been a while so I wouldn't be shocked if I did miss something. If so, I'll add it to a comment down below, so make sure that you check that out. As you can tell, it's no small task, but going through the trouble of hunting them all down will make you a hero to your groupmates more often than not. It's a big world out there, and one may even say that it's key to be prepared for any challenges that lie ahead. I hope that you found the video helpful. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Peace. Alright. Alright. Okay, those are the keys to success, boys. Farewell for now, boy. That was good, huh? I hope you enjoyed today's video. Alright, man, I can't stay awake anymore. Soon. Okay, uh, dude. Good luck getting on, and we'll... You we'll know. get on whenever we get on, dude. All right, I'll, I'll be down to play tonight, too. All right, dude, peace. Okay, peace. See ya. Holy shit, man. Like, I, I, I'm so glad this shit happened, man.